citizens have to pay for that mm -hmm. until all we do is put a lien on the property. And if we never get the tax, the three million, all the tax dollars are going to have to pay that. Yeah. If you have an administrative fee, it offsets it a little bit. The only ones really making money are the, are the landscapers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my opinion, we can take it to council if you like, or I can okay. talk to Steve more, but my opinion would be is if the, if the resident has been warned, uh, has done due diligence has been warned to Cut the grass and they still don't comply. If the taxpayers are having to put the bill for it, then I'm, I would be in favor of it. So we would have to change the ordinance. Should so get what, it. What would, you, what, would you want to decide a fee now? I mean, if it's 50, if, if it's, he said at least 100 to 250, what other, maybe Angela, you could look into that and see what other. Ingrid Lawn, maybe yeah. she can schedule a meeting. You can't just raise it, but I can look into it. The administrative fee. So this, this is an additional public hearing. No, this is the administration. Well, that's what we raised. Two fifty. Okay, well there we go. We're good. We have that. And then also we mentioned that the um, when they do COs, when they do the reinspection, they'll give you know how when you when you buy a house, you'll get the list that says you gotta do this, 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 and this. Well, what's happening now with um property uh owners who rent who are renters, they rent their homes, they'll They'll say you have to do this, this, and this, and they'll go and they've only done one thing. So then they have to go back and inspect and go back and inspect and like three, three or four times. And it, it's like the, only a $25 charge for each reinspect, which when I don't know what the exact charge is when they first go for CO, but it includes one inspection and it then does. Reinspect. Yes, it does. Right. But many times they're going back and reinspecting, reinspecting, reinspecting. So they, it's just like they want to drag it out, you know what I mean? So they don't have to do the work. 
And okay, it gets to the point where the city is, or, the, or I should say the residents are paying more than the, than yeah. the offender is at this point. Yeah, and you know what? It's, it takes our code enforcement off the street to re-inspect these properties, and they have to keep up with it. Or, you know, they're they're hoping, I guess, that we won't notice it, and then they'll just, they won't yeah. have to So I think so that it's not that we so want to make money, because we don't, but we just want to save um, our people from having to do all this legwork and tracking, you know. And the main thing is, is if the residents are paying for it. I don't know if they are or not. I mean, if, if the taxpayers are paying well, the, our, yeah, the tax our employees to go out there, then we should. Oh, then yeah, we should it and then that takes them away from what they really should be doing, which is. Is that something that should go to ordinance? Uh, well, it depends what, you know, how you want to handle it. If you are in favor of it, I mean, I think it could be a resolution uh, based on what other communities do. I mean, it's $25 to go out and read mm -hmm. That just doesn't seem like enough money. For... I think it would have to go be an ordinance. Yeah, yeah that, that was the ordinance that we did yeah. either earlier this year or at the end of last year. We increased last year already. But is it $25? It's $25 for the first one, yeah. And then you get a reinspect, but then $50, and then it goes up to 100 and then 150 I think. Okay. Well, Steve but, doesn't seem familiar with it. Um, <laughs> I think Steve may be looking at ordinances that either don't exist anymore or they haven't. Because there was a problem with another one. Yes, if I right. Recall right. Steve. Somehow he's looking at the code book, and sometimes the code book isn't updated. So I'll talk to Steve okay. and I'll ask him what it is he's concerned with, and okay. if it's something we have to do. So what did you put the, the CO up to? I don't recall. Really um, it depends. You I can hold up. Yeah, I was going to say, let me hold up. To or the CO, you're talking about the original no, inspection, I don't exactly. No, I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Jody's gonna look it up, but if it's not in the code book as an update, mm -hmm. then Steve can't get it. Okay. But he, he has but access, access to it. how the code book gets updated once a year, it's up. but as a new law is passed, they post that. There. They so, right when you go, it shows you the new law, right? But if you don't look there, if you just look. At the number, I but think they, they probably get the just too. But if they're not updated, the number books, you looked at the number, it doesn't look at the year. Update. Uh, what is up? Right. So I think it's best if I just talk to Steve and ask him. All right, maybe, maybe I well, email him. I already talked to him about that. Well, I, I, I told him yeah, well, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the one, Kim, that you told me about? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Why don't Why don't we leave it with Angela talking to Steve? Okay. He's fine. He's talking with what's already been passed. Because I actually had spoken to him because I said, are you not getting the updates? And and I talked to Meg as well and Angela. And um, he basically said to me, no, he didn't know. So I said, well, then I will personally give them. The, the thing is, the updates that happen throughout the year are in a different right. place than... No, the actually, code. in the e code, there's a little, there's a, I mean, it, it says it right at the beginning. It like, says yeah, new, right. new like icon. Right. And right. Then there's a little something what? right above like the a CO. The CEOs for the rentals and all that stuff. Because Again, I think if I think if Angela speaks to Steve and, and make sure that he's mm -hmm. has the right information, mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to proceed. Mm -hmm. If that's okay with council, I'll do that tomorrow. But, but the like Jody said, the ordinance, the, the code e, e code gets updated once a year. So if you're just looking at that, you may not see what we've done this year. Yes, yeah, that's exactly right. No, but if it's I, something that you aren't familiar with, it may not be something he's familiar no, with. No, but I send them in as, as the ordinances are, they go to the e-code and they update them. Oh, it's it just during the year? Yeah, every it's ordinance that's adopted gets a little gets icon. You have to, <laughs> if you pull up just by number, you're not going to get the icon. You have to pull up under general code. You go to the section, you go to the provision, and there's a little icon you have to click on. If you don't click on that, you don't get the update. Because okay, I look at my green book, I, I very rarely do. So you wouldn't have the new. Because, you, yeah, I don't yeah. have the new. But the new is. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think we did it this year. So, yet. so we did update the reinspection fees. We did. Yeah. The end of last year, the beginning of this year. But last year, so it should be in there. It should yeah. be in there. But I'm happy you to speak also to have it. You also have it listed on um, on the website too. The new ones as they come in, right? Under um, clerk and under there somewhere you have it. As well the as new well ordinances, as the new yeah, as they come. In. Well, who charges the when it's the landlord for the inspection fee? Who does that process? Who processes that? 
Do code 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 enforcement. Code because obviously it's probably not being processed correctly. Probably not. Yeah, so, the governing body doesn't isn't aware of it, then they may not be aware. So, so I think we can we can correct that. I was wondering if with code we can have a meeting a little more often and maybe get together with Steve Hadley, which I was trying to have a code meeting with Steve Hadley as well, so that we can all be on the same page. It it just hasn't been working out. Steve, do you think we can do that? You are the chair of the I think committee. we can have a meeting, but I think in this Steve? instance, I think it's better if Angela hands it. Yeah. And I would also suggest possibly that when anything pertaining to things like this code should be direct, if you, when you're e emailing e code, possibly CC code on that. So he has a copy of the ordinance in front of him. Well, I give them a copy. Oh, you do. Okay. And Donna, sometimes Donna has it. <clears throat> Can we can we maybe like make a notation for Steve for things that are changed yeah. maybe mm -hmm. so it would make it a okay. little bit yeah. you know sure. user friendly for sure. me. Okay. Because I was okay. just there yesterday and he brought all this up and said I'm for you to count it. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so there's definitely a good example on some some lack of communication. Because if we're just kind of discovering it right now, then I'm sure they're not aware of it. All right, well, that's good, but I don't know how, well, we just have to make sure we're charging the landlords for these new inspections and whatnot, mm -hmm. so, and the, and the grass button. Mm -hmm. All right, and then the only other thing I have is the uh, Economic Development Corporation is planning their fall festival for October 21st, and uh, school opens, all the large schools open September 5th. Yeah. Uh, just to piggyback on that, I was going to bring up in my report the change that they are changing the date. We originally approved it for the Saturday before. So I just, I was going to bring up that they would like to move it, the MPP, to the following weekend, which is 1021. If everybody's okay with that, um, the chief was in agreement to switch it to because of a lot of things going on. On what date was that? 10th? It's the week before the 14th. 14th. So they were they we, they can, we already approved it at a previous council meeting we can do that right now just a motion to approve the date change to 10 21. we need a motion have a second second all in favor aye council committee chair reports um i have a report from public works um he said they now have there are two new trucks currently. They are getting plows installed on them, which will make a total of five new plows, but seven trucks with plows in all. The two new hires are reaching their 90 days and working out great. However, we, we're, we are still down an employee and our current part-timer is leaving us first week of September. They want to advertise for a full-time temporary position. As everybody knows, we still have one employee who was out on medical leave and we're not sure. Okay. So um, he checked with Jody and Jody said, financially, we are capable of doing that without taking a um, hit on anything. They're working on cleaning out 1101 Deer Street. Once that's done, they can assess the property. That is the small engine repair shop on Deer Street. All the crossworks for the school have been painted and we're working on adding new some new ones in the north along Irving Street. They received the dates from Casey for Crusaders and have the four home games, trust, excuse me, and have the four home games covered for trash pickup. Tentatively scheduled are the letters for first responders park to be installed on 919. Also late closing coming fast and we have our final demo of street sweeper on 95 and after that we'll make a decision on which sweeper they're interested in purchasing. Does any other committee chair have anything to report on? I have a couple of things. I'll take ahead, please. Uh, for back to school or for uh, Board of Education, Sprague had their back to school event on Tuesday, which was wonderful. All the kids and the teachers were out there. Tonight is the community school's back to school event. And as the mayor said, uh, and I believe you said as well, school starts on the 5th. So we are getting ready for back to school. I have the badge reports. I'll just read the totals uh, for the lake sales. Total badge up to date is $126,581. Total for picnic tables is $25,315. Total for boat rides is $5,060. For total density, 
for the link is $156,965. It's a variance of $41,461 from last year. And we received our second payment from the campground, which was a total of 13,336 in total. So total lake revenue for 2023 is $170,292. And that's all I have. Okay. Any other committee chair have a report? Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to talk about the green team. Um, we're going to be holding our next meeting uh, here at City Hall, 6 p.m. Tuesday, September 26. Um, this is an important year for Egg Harbor City in 2024. Uh, we're going to seek recertification um, at the bronze level. We need 150 points for that. Uh, so we have some work to do. Uh, one of the major things we want to get done next year is to get our fourth community forestry management plan um, written. Uh, currently, there's no grants for that. In past years, we did get grants, but um, they're not funding that anymore, or it's not this year. Um, so I just want to ask council if they could pick up the cost, $2,500 cost, to hire a um, arborist. Uh, last year, the uh, last time it was done, this is a three-year certification. Last time it was done by a fellow named Ron Farr. Um, he did an excellent job. It's probably our best management plan. And we've accomplished almost everything on there, except for two things. One is um, getting the um, tree maintenance ordinance passed, which we're working on. And the other thing was to get uh, tree city designation from the Arbor Day Foundation. So, uh, I'm going to ask council if they would pick up the cost for that. And in the meantime, we can continue looking for grants to fund it. Nina, can I ask you, will they be trimming the trees on the main street? Because they really, there's been a lot of this. This, is, this, the is a, this is, has nothing to do with the actual building the work. Oh. It's a three-year plan oh. on what the city should do to maintain the street cover. So, uh, it's a requirement to apply for other grants for tree plantings and things like that you kind of have to have. Yeah. <laughs> Is uh, that now? Hmm? Is anyone? So, uh, well, so, I don't know. You'd have to check with Jody to see if she'd find the funding for it for this year. I would say, can we, like, mm -hmm. I'm not saying not to do it. Can we just do it at a future meeting so we yeah. can figure that out? <laughs> next we'll week. table that until Jody looks into the funding and then we'll bring it up again at the next week. All right. Councilman Dash. Yeah. We, um, I'm sorry, were you done? Yeah. Okay. That's my bad. Um, code enforcement. Uh, I don't have a report to give, but I will say that uh, I had a very productive meeting with with the chief of police. We're working on some measures to make code enforcement a little bit more efficient and give them a little bit more support. But it's in the very early stages, so there's I don't have a lot to report yet. Steve, can I ask you what was discussed? Are they thinking about possibly more? I can I can discuss that with you at a committee meeting. I'm not ready to discuss it publicly yet. I thought you would have discussed that. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, I have something on Rotary. Um, as far as the softball game, it's going back and forth, but we're now moving it to the spring. Uh, didn't work out for the fall, so we're moving forward. Um, that will the rest of the information on that will will be um, in future meetings. As far as the Halloween parade, we're working on that. Um, we're, there's going to be a change. It's going to be going in the opposite direction this year. We're hoping to make some positive um, some positive uh, changes um, on it. And we'll be having a DJ this year also. And um, a few a few uh, nice little upgrades. So that's all I have for Rotary. Thank, Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, moving on to the Chief of Police report. Here I missed an exciting meeting last night. So before I give my report, I was just out on an accident here at the corner of Philadelphia and uh, Camp Street. And it goes to show I was out there, two car accident, nobody was injured, thankfully. However, the lights 
people decided they need to take walks. People who never take walks decided they need to do that. So uh, I stand firm in my decision uh, from the incident on 720, uh, the shooting that happened at um, 1700 block of Liverpool Avenue, not to have done a reverse 911 call um, because notifying people of a not imminent dangerous event would have just brought out looky loos um, and would have impeded the investigation. So uh, I, while I was on vacation, I did receive some text messages from citizens. Um, and I was a little bit disappointed because I know that you guys said that I was away. Um, and, you know, I like to spend time with my family as well. And, you know, I appreciate everything that you guys did here as a council, as our solicitor, um, to support my decision that I made. And I, again, will say to anybody, it was my decision um, to not do a reverse 911, not any of yours, um, because I made the decision about what police information goes out. So, um, <clears throat> but on to other things, we've been busy since uh, the last time I was here. So I'm gonna give you some numbers. Um, we did have one aggravated assault. The shooting was considered an aggravated assault. Uh, uh, aggravated assault. There were no bodily injuries. It's considered property damage um, and an aggravated assault with uh, a deadly weapon. Um, eight burglaries, two counts of fraud, one narcotic slash CDS activity, um, one sex assault, one simple assault, three stolen motor vehicles, and 12 thefts. We had a total of 21 motor vehicle accidents, 16 pedestrian stops, and 141 uh, traffic stops. For a total of 110 summonses issued, we had three DUI arrests and 40 arrests total in the time period between 713 and 824. Um, <clears throat> other calls that we had, 23 business alarms, 10 residential alarms, 404 crime prevention activities, two criminal mischief calls, um, 17 domestic, 92 EMS incidents, nine firearms ID applications, 38 follow-ups, 1,200 property checks. That's right, one, two, zero, zero. Um, <clears throat> and 73 public service calls. Some things that we have been involved in. Um, I believe five of our officers went to an active shooter training um, that involved the fire departments, um, local fire departments and EMS. Uh, the goal behind that is we are not going to be isolated in our response to any active shooter, uh, anything that happens active shooter wise. So some Galloway EMS, um, Galloway fire departments, other police departments, officers were all gathered together to practice and go through different buildings. Um, one of the things was a tabletop, focusing on incident command and allocating resources, but those are things that we are committed to participating in and hopefully eventually posting something like that because our children are our greatest asset and that's probably our biggest responsibility. Everything else that happens in town is important, but you know, protecting our kids is, is foremost, uh, first and foremost for me at least. Um, <clears throat> This is a while back, but the fireworks, I thought they were great. They were lovely. Everything went fine. Um, we had a detective go through a few different trainings over the last month um, at Stockton. Pleasantville was good enough to put on, find, and host some uh, free trainings, specifically about cell phone data, social media um, investigation stuff. So he went to that. Um, you may have seen we've done some targeted enforcement. Um, because we are so staffed the way that we are now, um, we've been able to deploy additional resources to do target enforcement of things going on on Philadelphia Avenue and the White Horse Pike and Lincoln Park. So there are some evenings where you will see a whole bunch of police cars out doing stuff. So we have had some targeted enforcement. Um, Lieutenant Perna is continuing with his crisis negotiation training. Um, he did have training in. Detective Winkle went to a seven day, uh, or six day, I'm sorry, top gun school. Uh, it's very competitive. It takes a long time to get in. We were able to, because of our connections with the prosecutor's office, get him into this training, um, which is recognized by the state. Um, we are trying to get him also into another training for undercover work called UNIT. Um, <clears throat> all of us went to the range for range and qualification and range qualification and familiarization. Um, some of our officers and the mayor, we participated in the Cedar Creek Welcome Wagon. Uh, we were at the community school tonight, this evening, for their back to school night. I believe somebody was at the uh, elementary school on Tuesday. I'm not sure. I know I wasn't, but so that's what we've got upcoming. 
We're doing an inspection checkpoint. Um, we will be doing inspection checkpoint. They bring out a mobile unit. So if your vehicle is not inspected, you can get it inspected for free and they will slap a new sticker on for you. Um, we are participating in the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over initiative. Um, it is a statewide initiative from the 18th through the, uh, from August 18th through the September 4th. Um, so you will see increased enforcement of officers pulling people over. Um, so please do that. Start a school. Um, we'll be out at the schools in the mornings. We will be doing targeted enforcement there as well for folks who are speeding and not stopping in the crosswalk or crossing guard training we had earlier today. They're all excited to get back to work. Um, <clears throat> but yes, I would ask everybody to please be careful, watch out for kids so you might not be crossing where they're supposed to, but without them. Um, what else we got? Oh, Lieutenant Perna will be attending an arson investigator school. We are splitting that cost with the fire department. Um, important for us to have an arson investigator and uh, Lieutenant Perna is the perfect person to do that with his uh, position as captain in our volunteer firefighter, uh, volunteer fire department. So that's what, that's what we're working with right now. So we are busy. I have not forgotten about you. We will sit down and talk about the, um, about the, the parade. Um, but yeah, so that's what we've got going on. And of course, yes, I, um, I am, Unfortunately, not going to be here for the Fall Fest because of the change of date and the members of the EDC are not too happy with me, but I think they'll be okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so any questions, concerns? I just have a question. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Kim. Um, your pro your property and property inspections, you call them, or property, property checks, checks, what is that entail? And is that just like random or do people call you to go in and check their home? What is... So falls it, under that umbrella. So it depends on the it depends on the type of property. So if we do a property check of the high school, um, sometimes the officers will take their swipe cards to make sure that the swipe cards are good. They'll go around. They may walk around the school. Same thing at the uh, middle and, and elementary school. We don't pull on doors there because their um, alarms are very sensitive. But you know, a drive around, looking at the property, make sure nobody's doing any vandalism stuff like that. Same thing with businesses. We'll go um, drive through the parking lots pull on some doors, shine lights in the windows, to see if anything's going on. For personal properties, yes, we will do property checks. Um, people can come to the PD if somebody's going on vacation, say, can you do property checks at our house? At that point in time, we will go to the residence, we'll drive around, we'll walk through the yard. So, you know, it's like um, former Mayor Keener has cameras and he's like, we see you guys walking around. And I'm just like, hey, you know, that's to do property checks. So, you know, we will go into your property and, you know, if it's fenced in, we'll go in. And check, you know, you can designate how you want us to do that. But sometimes it is just driving through, seeing what's going on. Other times it is, like, for example, um, they'll do property checks uh, at certain, not necessarily certain residences, but after the shooting on Liverpool Avenue, the officers would do a property check of, they just call out a random residence that was there. So they're sitting there, just watching what's going on, seeing who's coming through. So that's what our property checks are. Thank you for that explanation. Yep. That was 1,200? Yeah. Wow. Uh, what I wanted to ask you, well, well, a few things I wanted to say. One, did you ever find anything out about the gentleman who was doing the uh, circles burning out in on Philadelphia Avenue? Yes, we were. Uh, we know who he is. We did not issue a citation for that. However, we have kept him on our radar. Um, and yeah, I, I have not seen that particular gentleman um, in a little bit, um, but yes. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see the uh, burn marks on the middle of the uh, Philadelphia Avenue anywhere. It really concerns me, especially because of all the festivals that we're having. I, I mean, not that it shouldn't concern me anyway, but because of that, and he didn't have a license plate or bumpers. So that was a concern. And on a positive note, I was at the Olympics and at, well, I was at the Cape Harbor City Olympics. Mm -hmm. And your officer, um, Mm -hmm. Oh, she she was wonderful. She really did a good job. I, yeah, I can that. I, yeah, yes, she 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 really did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Last, I was going to say that you want to mention Udo and also what we're planning on doing. Um, Not yet because I'm bored. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. um, but uh, yeah, you know, um, she won't watch this. So I'm positive. <laughs> <now>, um. <laughs> um so 
Off to Judo, she is a class two officer right now. We just got very good news from the PPC. Um, civil service, the bane of my existence, um, <laughs> makes it difficult to hire officers that are not necessarily on our list. However, she is a class two officer and because she has certain certifications, we just got word from the PTC, and this is statewide, that we don't have to wait a full year of class two employment in order to waive them up to full-time employment. So that is supposed to be effective as of September 5th. Um, we got word of that, and so um, I'm hoping that we can go ahead and waive her up to full-time um, and then hire another class. Um, but he texts her and tell yeah. her. I know. I'm, I'll talk to her tomorrow. And she she don't like publicity. She said that. No. Yeah. yeah. She. She. She would not. But um. But our guys have been working very, very hard. Um. Like you know, forty arrests in in a month's time is a lot. Um. You know, we've gotten a gun or two off the street. There have been some drug arrests. There's a lot of stuff happening. Um. A lot of behind the scenes stuff that we can't talk about. But uh, a lot of stuff. So. Well, thank you. We appreciate their hard work. All right. Thank you. CFO report, Jody. I don't have anything. Thank you. City clerk, Meg. Nothing. City attorney, Angela. No, I have nothing on it. Thank okay, you. Brian, let's get, let's no, I, follow I, suit here. I'm Brian. not going to be the one. No. <laughs> um, Engineer report. Well, I, I have something in the agenda, so I forgot I'd go to that. Um, we have change another, order. Oh, yeah, exactly. The final change order um, for the 2021 22 state aid roads. Um, the net is an extra $1,000. Um, Doing the intersection of six and hour, that was like seven thousand dollars. So if you would have had a net decrease of six thousand, now we have net increase of a dollar. So it's about as close as you're ever going to get in the system. So, um, and then the one other thing I just wanted to bring it to the attention now, we can take action or to take a step back and reconsider it. Um, a house was recently constructed at three hundred one Boston Avenue. Um, a builder purchased property, built the house. He pulled his building permits. The whole process took like two years. Um, I got a call like a couple days before that closing schedule to do a grading inspection. And we went out there and I said, well, they don't have any curb or sidewalks either. You know, it's required now to pull out. So um, at that point, he was already under contract, planning on closing within like a few days. So we said, okay, um, no one unilaterally has the authority to waive the requirement for the sidewalks from the grant the council. We will give you a TCO so you can move forward. Um, but they have requested a waiver from installing curbs and sidewalks at the property. Um, Brian, I think that's the same one that I said to leave. Yeah, which we talked about it, but I, I have to bring it to council to take action. So I, I did call the mayor as it was transpiring. Um, was so we had some thought, input. Yeah, it was it was a bit ago. Well, that's right. So they, they moved forward with closing and all that. Um, but again, ultimately, council needs to take action to, to formally waive that requirement since it is an ordinance requirement. Um, and I can tell you that there are no sidewalks on that street. Nobody has a sidewalk. Yeah, on, on that side, they're not. There's a couple across the street, um, but there are very large trees going down Burger Street that would need to come out to accommodate curves and sidewalks. Um, and it's possible there's a low spot in the front street, so I didn't even know that it was impossible without creating a puddle there, which is similar to a situation we waived uh, requirement for, cur for curbing along a house that fronted on Washington and where the cross street was. But in a similar situation, we're just going to create a low spot and we waive the requirement for curb because they would have to install an inlet. It's like thirty thousand dollars worth of stuff just to put the curb. Um, so I, I just wanted to bring out the council's attention. You know, like I said, whether you want to, you know, take action on it now or, or bring it back to committee and review it or whatever you guys want to do. I I would recommend you just do it. I mean, it's not really a big big issue. I'll make a motion you, to waive it. Can I just down there? Let's see. Can I just ask? Mm -hmm. um, this is permanent. It, it, it would, it would never be the, have to if they sell, never put that in. If yeah, they so the, the only time that curbs and sidewalks are required is when a, a new structure is built or is a major rehab or something like that. Right. So yeah, it would be waiving the requirement for him to have to do that now. It doesn't mean if the city came through with a project later, we wanted to do it, we could. No, a future homeowner wanted to do it, they yeah, certainly could. It, yeah, any, any obviously, it, it would relieve him of the burden of doing that. Can you explain how he didn't know that he was required to put a sidewalk? So he's a builder? Typically, that's mentioned to people who are doing these projects. Um, as far as I know, he's not built a house in Carver City. Um, so when I talked to... Uh, they require Bundes, that in other communities. Yeah, not, not all do, but many do. Not but, all. Um, so when I talked to the building department, they said that they don't believe that it was ever told to him that that was a requirement in the city. 
Uh, Who is there, the host there's like a big checklist. Well, so normally there's like a checklist of like, here's all the things you need to do. And that would either be included on that checklist or, or mentioned verbally. Um, and apparently mm -hmm. neither occurred. This is a spec house? Um, well, they, he built it and sold it pretty much immediately. Um, yeah. Welcome back. What, what, can, what can we do anyway? He already sold the property. What are you going to do? Go after the building? Well, they have a TCI. Yeah, we still have a TCO. Oh, the, no, so that's the reason. Here. Yeah. Right. So in, in theory, they'd be able to revoke, revoke the, the CO. Um, you know, at the time, it didn't really feel fair to pull the rug out from under these buyers mm -hmm. that he had lined up. Say like, oh, that house you wanted to buy right away. Um, I just was saying, but for the future, because this has happened before, shouldn't who is supposed to be telling them to put them in so well, we don't have to do this? I, I think it should go into the packet that's given to builders when they come and have it done it. beforehand. In South Correct. Ryan, did you see that? Uh, from in, in talking to Donna, she said that it, she she didn't find it on any of the lists or anything that they hand out. Can you repeat it, the address? Did you say three hundred one Boston? Yes. The lot we sold to be closed on it. That, was, that should be on your list. Yeah. That's, right. That's right across from that. Yeah. But that I'm was. saying this have happened before. Yeah. It would be better if we waived things. Well, so the the only other time that I can recall that we waived. I remember that one. S J yeah. How. Yeah. Right. Well, so he. But, he, but he since I've been here, there's been them. other instances. He, so, so well, that S J How one, he did all of them except the curb on the side street because it would create a drainage problem. Um, I, I don't can't recall. There was one the behind the um, fire department. Remember when that house got moved in there? I was just saying, maybe we should make it a yeah. point to tell. Oh, I, I agree. Uh, it should definitely be in the, the package that's distributed to a builder when they come in to get buildings. Yes. So, it goes for it creates the media energy planning. <laughs> well, yeah, we can um, certainly yeah. update at the same time we do that. But I, I did already have that. But, I'm, but at that time, they can determine if they're good, if they should have them or not. Well, yeah, because that's, I mean, think about it from the builder's perspective, it's a significant additional cost. It's a corner lot. You've got 200 feet plus mm -hmm. of curb and sidewalk to do. But the true rule, but right. everything else. Yeah, I mean, you're probably $30,000. I mean, that, that'll make or break the viability of yeah, the project. I, I the trees trees down. Down. Yeah, exactly. that's what I'm saying. By the time you do all that curb and sidewalk and take the street down, you're easily $30,000. So, um, you know, that's that's whether the lot is buildable or not, frankly. I mean, that's probably his entire profit margin. Mm -hmm. yep. um, Are you so, saying 301 or 401? 401. Uh, 401. Right I, I was just corrected. I, I was under the impression it was 301, but it's okay. like Lisa said, we, it's been a while. Uh, Keith, yeah. Keith yeah. Advice, he thought it was 401. Huh. Oh, so, this was, you said it's been a while. What do you mean a while? Um, it's been probably four weeks or yeah. five weeks. Uh, I was supposed to bring it up at the last uh, one. I forgot. Years. I was, now, just got back from vacation. One thing that I find with the sidewalks, and I know some people like them, some people don't, but in some, I don't like sidewalks personally because yeah. it separates the, I've been on record saying this before, but it separates the right away. And then the residents feel like they don't have to cut the section that's closest to the road. And that's why you see a lot of long, you know, sections that are cut because they don't think they have to do it. They well, any homeowner better know that that's their responsibility for that. Yeah. I mean, that's just common sense. No, no. <laughs> should we Trust me. Yeah. I know, I know there probably is, but I'm just saying it's common sense. You know what I'm saying. Right? Yeah, I got you. But it, I'm just saying, if it's all the property, they'll cut it. They'll cut for me. So I, got, I guarantee if you send a gas company or somebody there and have them start digging up that front yard, somebody's going to be coming out there saying, why are you digging up my yard? Yeah, exactly. But then, um, like, yeah. If you look at the 400 block, no, but it would be really out of Oh, yes, yeah. 100%. Nobody has sidewalks there. Nobody on yeah. the side of the street. Right. And it would look silly to have a little, it serves no purpose, really. It serves no purpose at all. But, you know, that's the council's decision. I mean, years ago, oh, we, it's we would die, they, the council would die before ever waving a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually under construction during this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, it took them like two years to build that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's and what Donna they said. Just, like, yeah, they the permits are just two plus years. Like that, they, they Well, they, yeah, they didn't. They didn't remove any. Um, as part of a subdivision <laughs> street, as part of a subdivision street, trees are required. As part of a single family right. just lot, it, they're not. If, if like for neighbors Cedar Creek stuff like that, where we have major subdivisions, then street trees are required mm -hmm. for a single they family home. Street trees. They're not going to Cedar Creek. I, I know we waived that because we preserved the numerous other spots. But. Yeah, if, it, if it's a sidewalk, it would not connect to another sidewalk, and I'm fine with it. Yeah, it, it wouldn't at either end. It'll be the only sidewalk on the whole block. Yeah. yeah. 
So do we have a motion? Yeah, I made a word. All right. Can I can I just ask one last thing? I know you said that it it won't make it like by doing this, if we're moving forward and we decide to go with sidewalks in that area or on that side, mm -hmm. they can't bring it up and say, Oh, I, you know, I would I'm exempt from this. No, absolutely okay. not. It just, just it waves sure. the, the ordinance requires that you install curbs and sidewalks when you build a house. This is just relieving them of that requirement at this time. That's all, all I'm asking. All right. What we need is just a yeah, okay. nay or nay. We need a roll call. I would do a roll call. Right. At Tanisi? Yes. Clark? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hold on there. She's at the section of the meeting. Clark? Yes. Clark? Clark? yes. Can you hear me? Yes, you're voting yes? Yes. Okay. Dash? Yes. Galloway? No. Heist? Yes. Hesse? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Right. Yes. <clears throat> That's so loud. All right. Number 13. We have a resolution yeah. FY 2021 and FY 2022 reconstruction of Chicago and Washington Avenue's final as bill quality change order. Additional one thousand sixty-four dollars and forty-eight cents. This is what Brian just spoke about. Yep. Um, any questions or comments? Okay. Can I have a motion? So moved. I'll second. Roll call. At Yes. Clark. Yes. Dash. Yes. Galloway. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed it. It's just the as-built quantity. So, like at the end of the job, we just there's a bunch of negatives, there's a bunch of positives. You end up oh, yeah, thousands. Definitely. Yeah. Heist? Yes. Hesse? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay, number 14, resolution approved state contract vendor for fencing. Questions? Questions or comments? This seems kind of uh, generic. It doesn't, it's not specific. Where's the fence? The second, this is just approving if we had projects that we wanted to do fencing with, it would just approve the vendor so we could like move forward with it, utilizing the state contract. Do plan to build a fence? Yeah, we're getting prices for um, the police department is like the, one of the biggest ones. They're going to put like, I guess, like around like the parking lot, right? Yes. Um, so um, <laughs> when we get ready for our shift, we have to bring lots of stuff out, including rifles and everything like that. It gets a little bit disconcerting if we're walking out um and you know we're getting stuff ready there's access to us um we've had first amendment auditors come amendment auditors come into our parking lot looking into our personal vehicles looking into our police vehicles you have people coming through um a few weeks ago we did have someone who was under arrest run out of the police department and we had to go on a foot chase um you know we don't have a sally port so there's no way to securely have anybody in there um it just makes it a lot more secure a for the police officers um it keeps people who are thinking about running out of the building from running out of the building um keeps our vehicles more secure both personal and um and, and police vehicles so that's uh that's where that's the the thought process behind all that. So one thing I forgot to mention as well, back to my police report, I was able to secure a sixteen thousand dollar grant for body worn cameras, um, and we just submitted the paperwork. We're just waiting for the final stuff with that. So, um, but yeah, all right, that's a thing. Yes, we do have the money for it. Any other questions, comments? Were you going to talk about the other fence? Seeing none. No. Oh, yes. Yes. Didn't you say there was damage? Could you elaborate? Well, the one fence there was also a fence that was damaged. We, um, these wood basins that were this is part of the community stool. Is there a catch? Is there still a green? Oh, there's still a green. Yeah, as I said, yes, city yes. built that yeah, 10 or 12 years ago, right? Is it the one across the, the street? Yes, mm -hmm. it's it's the side side. Everybody good? Roll call. 
Oh, did we get a motion? Oh, if you need a motion, sorry. Can I ask you something? Both of these are together. So I don't think we decided yet. Both. Well, you're we're not approving a project. We're just approving being if we oh, wanted to purchase sense. something that these would be state contract vendors that we could use. Okay. To to do them. So and will there be a resolution for for the projects when they come yes, up? We can if you they, theoretically you don't believe that, but we can. Right. If it in the budget, the budget was already approved. Right. It doesn't have to be. No, it doesn't. It wouldn't have to be. It's already the state through. contract. I think there was some funding at Crusaders too, right? Yeah, it's in the works. I'm waiting for a couple of people to meet me out there. So eventually I'm just going to pull the trigger. But, um, All right, I got the but, first and the second. <laughs> okay. Can we request to have have um, a resolution every, every time? Because you have to feel so that we know. So we can do that. Sure. Thank you. That's an easy. Yes. Clark. Clark. She not? Oh, she's not on anymore. Dash. <laughs> yeah. Galloway. Yes. Heist. Yes. Hesse. Yes. Timbers. Yes. Right. Yes. All right. Number 15. Refund third quarter tax due to 100% disabled veteran status. Right. I have something to say. Uh, I think at the last meeting, the mayor had requested that these be done confidentially. Oh, well, I didn't put their name There's on the no agenda. Name address on it. So it on the agenda. You see it on your resolution. Yes, it's on the resolution. Right. Okay. You, you are the only ones to see it. Right. Unless, right. right. <laughs> However, this was on the last week, but this is the back that they paid, that right. they paid up front. Any other questions or comments? You have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call. Atanisi? Yes. Clark? Dash? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Heist? Yes. Hesse? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, number 16 is for public hearing ordinance 14 2023, amending chapter 213.3, property maintenance of the code of the city of Egg Harbor. Does anyone from the public have any questions or comments? Introduce. Yeah. Open up. Make a motion and introduce to the public. Sandra, it's coming back on. So. No. Okay. Does anyone from the public have any questions or comments on this public hearing ordinance? Okay. So Make a motion to close. Second. Okay. Can I have a motion to adopt? Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. I'll make a motion to adopt. Right on Second. Us, yeah. <laughs> At Tanisi? Yeah. Clark? Okay. Dash? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Heist? Yes. Hesse? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Right. Yes. And then we need a motion to advertise the notice of adoption in the Hamilton Gazette on August 30th. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Can that be all in favor? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Please say. Number six. Number 17, public hearing ordinance 15 2023. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> make a motion to open this to the public. I'll make a motion. Yes. Second. This is amending chapter 198, Title Parks and Recreation Areas, Article 1, Title Lake Park, Section 16.1, Title Prohibited Activities of the Code of the Egg Harbor City. Does anyone from the public have any questions or comments? Um, before you before you close public comment, Joe, did you still have that photo on your desktop that I asked you to of the map of the um, trail? Did you email it to me last time? I emailed it to you. I think then I showed her. I just wanted to make sure everybody knew where this gate was because there uh, there are two gates that we installed for the nature trail, and, to, and I also requested that a, a sign be put up in a specific area, no vehicle beyond this point, to prevent people from driving on the trail. I think they can do. And I, I asked Jody to yeah put on it. The signs came in. Signed him in. Mm -hmm. Good. You look at that. They're up already. They're up already. <laughs> I'm just trying to. Yeah. Okay. Um, the trail is on the left hand side and it goes up and you'll see a loop. Um, there's a gate. Right next to the entrance to the to the um, to the lake, across the um, 
campground, the green section at the bottom, that's that's the, the um, entrance to the lake and there's a gate there. That gate will remain closed at all times. There's another gate on Philadelphia Avenue where it says Map Legend right there. That's Liebig Street. There, that gate is the gate that will be open for the hunters. And it'll be open until it gets to the left-hand side. That blue route is, is the walking trail. No one is allowed on that walking trail. So Keith put up a sign that says no vehicles beyond this point. So just so everybody's clear, that's the only section that will be Do open in the hunting season. Could you clarify? You said no one will be allowed. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah, allowed on the walking trail. To drive. To drive. To drive. Oh, oh, drive. drive. Okay, yeah. No on the, on the walk. And honestly, if it's hunting season, nobody should be walking on the walking trail either, unless they're dressed in a lot of orange. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, thank you. All right. Any questions from the public? Okay, make a motion to close the public hearing. Sorry. All right. I need a motion to adopt. Make a motion to adopt. Second. Roll call. Atanisi? Yes. Clark? It's off again. Dash? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Heist? Okay. Yes. Hesse? Okay, yes. she must be having a connection. Timbers? Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, and I need a motion to advertise the notice of adoption in the Hamilton Gazette on August 30th, 2023. Wait, Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number 18, a motion to approve the bill list. So moved. Second. Roll call? Atanisi? Yes. Clark? Dash? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Heist? Yes. Hesse? Yes. Timbers? Yes. Wright? Yes. Okay. Mayor, any comments? Just to thank the Economic Development Corporation for the great job they did on the Flint Festival. It was uh, very successful. Probably thousands of people. A lot more busy than last year. It was a little bit cooler, but, you know, everybody got involved in the fire department, the police department, and it was a nice event, a very nice event. Council. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Council on the Hesse, anything? Um, I just wanted to um, say, I've been on council for almost a year and a half now. And the reason I ran was because I'm very passionate about the code. Um, and about working to improve the code department and to make it more efficient and effective. So we have two part-time officers, also a secretary who can handle the day-to-day -day business for the code department, as well as the land use board. Because the department is spread so thin to keep the costs down, I believe the code committee must play a more active role. It has been said by Mayor Keener when cutting the administrator position, without the administrator, the various services he provided will fall on the department heads and council members. He also said, we are going to ask council committees to be more active and be more in the overseeing role. So co-chair Dash, I'm hoping that we can be a little bit more proactive. I know you and I don't, necessarily see things the same way but i would like to get together more to be able to be more active in our community to help to clean to help the code department work efficiently and effectively um, also regarding the tcos i believe the code committee should be present when making the decisions to give another tco if properties are getting TCO for years, I have a problem with this. We need to set rules and abide by them. I will be compiling a, a list of rental properties that are not complying with our code and putting an excessive burden on our departments. So I have to say thank you, everyone. Have a great Labor Day. And we'll see you until after then. And I know that I don't know what the Mayor Keener has to do with this, but well, it, it, it is something it it is, he had. Which I mentioned before, the personnel manual that everybody got a copy of. Yeah. So.
So I don't know what the former mayor has to do. Oh, it was just something I saw on the paper, and he had written, it was written in the press. Oh, you don't think he didn't see or anything? No, no, no. This was a while ago. This was 2019, actually, I'm not, I'm not that he said that. that. At all. It was, he had said this when he, when he got rid of the position. Because the council did adopt the first year on that. Yeah, it's there, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Yeah, I just, I'm just, Asking Councilman Bash, any thoughts? Um, I'll save my rebuttal to um, Councilwoman Hesse's uh, comments to talk to her personally. Um, but I would also like to say thank you to all the city employees. I know how hard all of you guys work from city clerk to public clerks to our police department to our code enforcement. It's not an easy job. I understand that. I know uh, at times you're harassed by different people, and I know that you guys are working the best you can. So I'd just like to say thank you. Councilman Reich. Um, just a couple things. Just to let everybody know, Sunday, Cedar Creek kicks off the football season, uh, one o'clock in Ocean City. Um, and then following next the next week, September 2nd, the Crusaders kick off their opening uh season. So if you guys ain't have nothing to do this weekend or next weekend, come on out and support the kids, our local kids. Um uh, they need all the support that they can get, you know, without the the support, they don't feel like they're nothing and as you know, they're on the streets doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing. Um, so we got to keep these kids active and keep these kids motivated and um, give them something to look forward to. Um, also, just to let everybody know, September 30th will be the Crusaders Beef and Beer from 6 to 9 o'clock. So we will be looking for you no know, donations or anything. Or anybody wants tickets, you can reach out to me, Clark, mm -hmm. Casey, or anybody will have tickets hopefully soon. So Where, where will that be held at? Cautious. Okay. Yeah. You know, September 30th, yes. Nine? Uh, six, six to nine. Cost? Uh, it's $20 a ticket. Food? Dinner? Uh, food and, I guess, just, uh, I think it's usually Miller Lite and Ford Lite or Yingling and Ford Lite. Or, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank they're being exposed. Hopefully, they're being made now as I speak. But okay. that's what England. Yeah, she can answer the questions now. Make it so fast. Now we get it right there. Okay, is that it, Mace? I think so. Okay. Councilwoman Anthony's. I just wanted to say thank you for putting on a great food truck festival. I know we were out there with kids, and we got some. Wonderful comments about the kids um, in this town. Mm -hmm. uh, when Mason and I were leaving and packing up for the night, um, you know, we we all pour a lot of our time and effort and energy into volunteering for them. So to hear those comments that they were respectful and they were kind, and that they you know were out there bringing joy to other people, I know personally I took this part, and I know Mason did too. So we wanted to say thank you for that. And the Olympics were wonderful too. The kids had a great time out there. So. Um, it's just wonderful to see the community come together for good things. Uh, everywhere that you go is going to have something yep. bad going on in your neighborhoods. And if you bring all the good stuff to light, there's always more good than there is bad. And so just keep looking for the light and seeing the positives. <laughs> that's all I have to say. Councilwoman Gallagher. Yes. Um, we had a question here last week um, asking for more transparency. Okay. So I went back to view the meeting. It is incomprehensible. You couldn't hear one word that was said. It broke up. It is awful. We have to do something about getting microphones, getting audio equipment in here. Now, we got commitment from Comcast when we renewed their contract for 15 sure. years that they would give us $12,000. Some problems with the EPU, and, and I'm sure we still can get the money for somebody that will please let me know. I don't think we can wait much longer. I don't think we can wait until that money comes in. I'd like to see the council approve upgrading this room so that meetings can be broadcast properly, that the camera could be set in the right location so that you're not looking at the back of the chief's head when she's making her report. It's, it's embarrassing. To, to, to look and see that anybody who's interested in investing in our town watches one of those videos and they're turning around and they're going Galloway or Mullica. 
we got to do better. We got to up our game. And I'm suggesting that we move forward to get in this room equipped to properly broadcast our meetings. Well, until Zoom, we used to broadcast and we had a camera person and we were fine. But when now that we're Zoom, we're having problems because the, the microphone that Jody bought for this thing, I, I've been looking for it all night. I don't see it anywhere. It's hidden. It's right here. Well, it here should be the box. microphone should be worked. So that should be that. Yeah, I think the last meeting was really as bad as the that she uses. I did go on it, though. I could hear it. Where do you listen to it at? From the website? No, we got the feedback and there was a lot of breakups. Right. Okay. Yeah. In the beginning, I think there was, right? We were having some internet connection yeah. issues last yeah. meeting. I did hard Which wire. have a lot here, so, so I don't know. Yeah. And, and, and what happens when you mess with Tom? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, years ago, when the contract was given to Comcast, they provided audio equipment. They they provided the um, video equipment that's broadcast on Channel 2. So I don't know if we still have that, if that's still operational. This is really what people look for. They're looking to look at the meeting and see our faces on Zoom. Would we have to have somebody to run it while the meeting was going? Well, yeah, maybe. You know, we used to do it before yeah. and no, it runs it excuse me. You've got two people here. One of you two could be, you know, no. okay, working the camera if it's if it's needs to be work. But in other, in other communities, the camera yeah. is stationary. It's just turned. Yeah, I don't think I'll work the camera. I don't yeah, think right. that's the happening. Last meeting that uh, if we yeah. can, if we can put that money out first, and then they reimburse yeah. us. Yeah. Actually, we're trying to say. I just talked to Comcast about a week ago. You were both emailed. Yeah, yeah right. I saw. It. And you I said he'll give the money. No, he said he's going to send a check, but still get it. Right, soon. I mean. I believe him. I think he's going to get it. Yeah, I, I think we're going to get it too, but I don't think we should wait until we get it. So <clears throat> continue. Should we start looking? I mean, if he's going to be giving it to us soon? We can if you like. We yeah, can. I mean, I, I, start, I have started it. getting prices on it. I can like follow up on them. Right. So that Let me tell you, the happen. one price that I got was not that bad. The other ones were quite a bit more than what Comcast has given us. What are the what are the prices? So I mean it was also at this point a while ago, but the first one was maybe between ten and fifteen. The other people were like, oh it's like forty, forty thousand yeah. dollars. So I mean that you, seems insane to me. So what are you getting more or less, should I say, for the ten to fifteen? Anything that you could that I you mean I was I don't really have the never I never got anything from the forty thousand people. They came and were like forty. I'm like, we're not spending forty. Yeah. Yeah. I think all of us 10, I think but... all of us agree that we definitely want everyone to be able to hear us um and see us. Yeah. So can you just look into a little bit more? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um and the other thing I want to suggest spending more money. <laughs> um hmm. I think that a lot of the code issues that we have are from trash. Now, I have been complaining about trash on my terrace for two, three years now, and I've filed maybe half, uh, more than a half dozen reports. The trash is stuck to the pavements. It's never picked up, and I'm getting sick of it. I've never been contacted to appear as a witness in court, and I want these people, three houses on the end of my terrace, brought to court. I'm sick of looking at it. It's affecting my property values. If I wanted to sell my house tomorrow, somebody takes a walk at the back of the property and they're just like, oh God, I don't want to live here. There's dirty diapers sitting in the grass at this one house. There's broken glass, crushed. It was so many cars have, have run over it. it. It never goes away. It's never cleaned up properly. There's trash cans and lids strewn all over the intersection. And I'm sick of it. I am totally sick of it. So I'm going to suggest again, like I did several years ago, that the city consider purchasing 95 gallon trash receptacles for every household. It'll cost $200,000, but I guess what? I think our property values will go up tenfold if we could just clean up the city. Minette, you said there was lids strewn all over. Did, did they buy trash cans? They bought lids? the cheapest so lid trash cans you could buy, and they lasted $70. two weeks, and the lids were off. 
I know we purchased lids at our residence and the school children took our lids and, and used them as frisbees and we found them five houses down. No, they so have to be hinged. The, they, they not everybody can up. afford that though. Well, that's why our town looks like it does. And I'm sick of looking at it. I ran for council to clean up this town and it's it's not getting any better. And asking the police department to get involved, it, I think is a mistake. It was done years ago. It lasted a couple months and they're just too busy. They can't do that job. We need full-time code enforcement officers. We They need to do their job, which is totally different. We need to clean up this city. I'm sick. I, I kind of agree with Kimmy Kim over there that, that, you know, code enforcement has to do better. And I know with two part-time people, they're all already overworked. So we got to figure something out to clean up this town because our property values are suffering. And... You know, we got to bite the bullet. Sometimes you got to do things that are hard. And I think everything we have to do is kind of hard. And which I think when you're talking about spending money and creating positions, I think these people up here don't need to be more involved. We need an administrator to, to hold everyone in the building accountable to their to do their jobs. And I'm not saying that people aren't, it's just yeah. that they're they're not, we don't have funding to give to them to create all these positions, but maybe we, should, we can create an administrative position who could do more overseeing, even if it's an on a part time basis. So I, I just want to see something done about yeah, cleaning up the town. Well, maybe we could hire a full time person or make a full time person code who's responsible for it because that's what we used to have. We used to have a full time code and two part timers. And then we lost Tim. To is that? Him. Are you sure that's the case? Yes. I'm getting conflicting yes. information. Yes, yeah, 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 was full time. time when we had Jody. Did we have a full time and two part time? I think it was. Yeah. We had Al one full time. Wait, wait, one part. I'm not positive. I'd have to go back and check. I honestly am trying to remember. I, I think it was one, year, one Bob yeah, full time and one part time, right? When when Bob Ross was here, we yeah. had a we did have a full time. Right? Well, so that that was full time. Yeah. So Tim was full time, but that was in the last few years. And did we have a full part time, time and two part time at the same time? Yeah, I think we did back in like uh, it wasn't that long ago. I don't we think it was three people. Yeah. Uh, and we made a lot of improvements when we had those people. I don't the council put them in uniforms and they can you look into that to see if we had actually three at one time and get back to me? Angela, can I ask? I know I asked you online. Can someone else represent from the code mm -hmm. if they're going to court? Mm -hmm. Can someone else go to court? Another another code officer go to court that did not write out the violation on behalf of the city. On behalf of the city. So the city basically delegates out their responsibility for courtroom appearance. Is that what they would do? That would well, the, the best thing would be to format the whole thing, and that way you'd get the person who wrote out the ticket which is the best scenario. If that person's not available and there's someone else within the city that can do it, okay. yes, they can within the city. But they have to be within the city working with the authority of the city. Okay, so any capacity in the city or would that be police department or code? code. Someone with knowledge of the circumstances, the facts, who can actually testify before the court. So if we were to get a third even a third part-time person, and they were pretty much designated as the court person. Court person, you know. And then, well, if, if there are funds available, the court, then they can then they can just act as a team. As a team, yeah, yes. they can act as a team. That, I will say, I've been here a long time and seen people uh, come and go, and uh, council's uh, always gotten up, been upset uh, with code uh, enforcement. Uh, it, 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 I mean, it's yeah. it is and. Nothing against, but I'm maybe I don't know if it's a training or what you're looking for. Or I think everybody I've dealt with all the employees that have done the code enforcement. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different idea of what's not good, what's good, and you know everybody's idea of what doesn't look good is different. So possibly when if you are talking about hiring someone new, maybe come up with a clear plan of what you want them to address and. You know, I could, I could I say, I mean, not, not for now to say it here at a council meeting, right. but I'm talking about planning for the future because I've seen them come and go and they express frustration with, <laughs> with how they're treated, how this one tells me this, this one tells me that there's no clear direction. 
So to me, when they're hired in the beginning, they're not being hired and told, I believe, what they need, what their position entails. So and what is expected expect, of what that. the expectations of that position okay. are. So, Steve, do, hmm? do you think as the committee, yeah. code committee that we can write something up that you know, for them, what their job. I mean, that's not, I don't there think, is first of all, they have, they, there is they have a job description. Yeah. yeah I, don't, it's, it's I don't think we need to, to say I don't think we need to reinvent yeah. no, what their job position is. They have a job position and they know what the job position is. Okay. As I said earlier in my report, we are working on a possible plan, something that you and I had discussed prior, wow. but it's still in the very beginning stages. And as soon as I have some more information, I'll sit down with you and the rest of the committee and we'll hash it out. But right now, I don't have enough information to discuss it, but it is something that's in the works that'll give us some more additional code enforcement capabilities mm -hmm. while we're supporting and respecting the employees we have and giving them some some uh, additional help. Just thought, could you just fill me in when you, you know? I will. As, soon as, I, as, as I said earlier, that as soon as I have more them. information, I will mm -hmm. share it with the entire code committee and I will share it. Oh. With city council, and I will say share it with all the residents. Since I'm the vice chair, I figured you know it would be nice to be able to share. I understand. I understand. I understand. But just like you go to count to code and have meetings with them, sometimes I have meetings without you. I and this was the you, very. And you could never this make was, it. This was the very beginning I stage, and we're just starting. So give me some oh, time, and when I have more information, I'll be sh I'll be happy to share it with you. Okay. I can't be any more clear than that. And I, I did ask Steve to talk to the chief about the idea. Yeah, yeah. you were at the yeah, we were at the meeting. But the that. thing is, is I'm not saying you have to hire one part time, one full time or two part time. But at the point of hiring a full time person is, and you do need a part time person too, is and and can't be the zoning officer. It cannot be the zoning officer. He has to share problems. And it has to be someone, and this is this is the bottom line problem. And that someone has to be in charge of following. Donna is in charge of day-to-day -day operations of her department, and she is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> but she does not tell the, you know, it's not really her job to say. She is the building department secretary slash land use secretary. Okay, she does not tell code enforcement what to do. She helps them. Mm -hmm. She assists them. But it's, there's nobody really telling anybody what they have to do. They have a job description, and they do their job. Because if you look at the report last month, mm -hmm. they got a lot of good hits. Mm -hmm. A lot. Very but active. there has to be follow-up. Well, Very active. Thing, because you, it's you repeat, need that repeat. fine person there to, first of all, you need a system to, you know, communicate. Like, we've been talking about for a long time. But, like, you need you need a person there, maybe not so much an administrator, but a person that is in charge of the follow up, and it is a big position. It's it, it's got to be huge because I, I'm just going to give you a quick example. Like I was at the school tonight, and that, you know, of course, when people see me, you know, it's all they want to tell me stuff, and it's great. I'm glad. I'm really glad they do. If there's an issue on on one of the other streets that. The, the neighbor next door, he gets this, 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 and this, and this, and he gets red tagged, red tagged, red tagged, red tagged, red tagged. Years later, the problems are still there. They don't go away. Mm -hmm. And that's the real problem. It's not that they're not doing their job. It's just that. It's not that, that I but I don't think there's proper training to know when the red tag stop. He told me, I asked him exactly what his procedure was. He told me. They know Absolutely. Red, that's not he me. told me exactly what he was doing. So, so that's that something that, thing that this one property since the beginning of the year, this is all of their violations. So, I mean, and there's numerous. So why is that, that person this. taken to court? It's a rental. Why is that person taken to I court? I have no idea. Don't ask me. That's exactly right. I think we're, we're, we're being a dead horse. Yeah, we're beating a dead horse. We need to move on. This can be taken up in a code meeting in the committee and then brought back to council. All right. Hi. <laughs> Councilman Timmons, do you have anything to say? Uh, yes. Um, so if you're a parent, kids are getting ready to go back to school and uh, school school supplies, they get more expensive every year. Um, you know, I like to be able to point you in a direction where they're cheaper. Uh, 
However, there are some places where they are free. One such place is Abundant Life Worship Center Church. It's a, it's a, a local house of worship. They're located at 32 Bishop John R. Gandhi Avenue in A. Garbage City. That's New York Avenue. It's John R. Gandhi. <laughs> so uh, on August 25th and August 26th, uh, they will be hosting a vacation Bible school and back to school giveaway. They're going to be giving out backpacks that are fully packed with school supplies. Uh, there'll be arts and crafts, games, music, and and food. So uh, on the 25th, it's from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. On the 26th, it's, it will be from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. So if you're looking to get some free supplies. That was August, uh, right? Can you repeat yeah. that again? I'm sorry, the dates for that? Okay, it's August the 25th. Tomorrow, Saturday. Tomorrow, Saturday. Okay. Oh, tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, yeah. tomorrow's 25th. 25th. And then we're at, I'm sorry. So it's going to be at Abundance Life Worship Center Church. It's located at 32 Bishop John R. Candy Avenue. So the other side of the way. is New York Avenue. Yeah. 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 still on. Hours, one more time. The hours? Yeah. So tomorrow will be 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Yeah, and then uh, Saturday, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. 12 Thanks. And for anybody who buys school supplies, there's a tax holiday in there for this next week. We, we do not pay sales tax on any uh, school supplies. Yeah. The whole week? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole week. All right. Okay. Anything okay. else? Okay. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. We did vacate that second week that in Bishop Gandy's room is on the terrace. First terrace. First terrace. So, you know, that's not, we don't have New York Avenue with it. It's been but one of them is right. The one by the Avenue. That's not that. Not you talk about that. Yeah. Before. So the New York Avenue right away is two hundred feet wide. Everywhere else, on the the unit block um, between Atlantic and Route Thirty, city vacated one hundred and thirty feet of it to the church side, and there's a seventy foot right of way that remains. We promised to rip up the asphalt as part of a project down near the train station like ten years ago. And South State finally did it for us when they did the 30 project as part of their restoration of that area when they dug the truck. So the road physically does not exist there anymore, but there is still a 70 foot right of way that is smaller than the right of way for the rest of you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> is that it, Council Timbers? Yes, thank you. All right. Um, all I have to say is. Short and sweet. Everyone have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Good luck to all the kids going back to school, whether you're starting pre-K or you're starting your senior year in college. Make the most of it. Um, and to all the parents who are sending kids to school, cherish every moment of it. Because when you become an empty nester, it's a whole different world. <laughs> um, everyone have a great week. Um, any from we need comments from the any public comment. Tracy, Tracy, Tracy you just introduce hey. yourself. Hey, it's Tracy Mulhern, 314 Argo Street. Quick question for Engineer Ryan. Have you heard anything about the bicycle lane going up Philadelphia Avenue to the lake? Now, he's not the engineer on that, but um, they, Tracy, can you hear me? Yes. They're still uh, planning on going out to bid sometime in the fall, but I haven't had any confirmation on that. That engineer is CME, and um, I have not too much contact with them, but I know that the project's still going forward. Great. Um, I will try to get more information on that for you. I think they've been working on, like, the Pine Lands applications. Yeah, Pine Lands application. Mm -hmm. Cool. Great. Thank you. That's all. Thanks, Tracy. Anyone else? Ingrid said she her phone is dying, but she has no comments. <laughs> Thank you, Ingrid. All right. Um, make take a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.